we turn to The Guardian in an article written by Ph.D. Ian Sample. He writes, quote, In 2008, a team led by Mike Edmonds and Tony Freeth at Cardiff University used modern computer X-ray tomography and high-resolution surface scanning to, uh, to image inside fragments of the crust-encased mechanism and read the faintest inscriptions that once covered the outer casing of the machine. This suggests that it had 37 meshing bronze gears, enabling it to follow the movements of the moon and the sun through the zodiac, to predict eclipses, and to model the irregular orbit of the moon, where the moon's velocity is higher in its perigee than in its apogee. This motion was studied in the 2nd century BC by astronomer Hipparchus, Hipparchus, we're going to go with Hipparchus, Hipparchus of Rhodes, and it is speculated that he may have been consulted in the machine's construction. Now, what I also read, in fairness, is that the concept of the mechanism could have potentially originated in Sicily. So all I have to say to that is it's like, hey, look at us. We might have done it. You know what I'm saying? It could have been us. This is what they're telling me. You know, I read this. This is real. This is what they're telling me. So it could have been us. You know what I'm saying? So wherever my Sicilians are at, just, hey, you know, it could have been us. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. But I, I digress. I, I also learned that the motions of the planets are mentioned on the back door of the mechanism. And it's like, of course they are. Right. Because what the back door of the mechanism has been described as, as I learned uh, later on through my research, is the instruction manual. So basically, they wrote the instruction manual for this thing on the back door of it. And I mean, come on, here's the here's this is a device that is able to track the movements of our solar system and the instruction manual fits on the back door of this thing. Meanwhile, today, when you buy a TV stand. The instructions come on a piece of paper whose size you've never seen before. You've never encountered the size of those instructions on any paper you've ever seen in your life. And for some reason, it's been folded with a ratio of 55 hot dog style folds for every one hamburger style fold. And so you unravel this mess that has every language in the world is written on it, which is kind of cool. That's, that's a nice thing. But still, every possible language of how to build the TV stand is included on this weird piece of paper uh, that you, you can't account for. You've never seen paper like that. And those are instructions for a TV stand, not a solar clock that contains the understanding of the movements of the solar system more than... Every single human I've ever met. There is not a human I have personally interacted with in my life that understands the movements of the solar system as well as this uh, clock that they were somehow able to create and put the instructions to on the back door of it. So really, really think about what we're talking about here. Uh, this, is a, this is a fascinating device just on that alone, in my opinion. But wait, trust me, we just wait because it gets, it gets crazier. Now, that, that's also, and I did want to say this, that's not to mention that they also threw this thing on a boat and just headed out to sea. They didn't bubble wrap it in some conspiratorial large amount of bubble wrap. And I say conspiratorially large because sometimes you get packages and it's like, where the hell is all this bubble? Why? Like, where is it coming from? Why are they doing this? It's like they're in cahoots with the bubble wrap industry. And just buying it up and making those people rich for some reason. It's insane. It's like, why do we have so much of this non-biodegradable plastic and everything that is shipped everywhere that definitely doesn't need it? Like, I really don't think when you order your AirPods and they already come in a plastic container that you, they need to be wrapped in bubble wrap or whatever. And maybe, oh, and Apple, you know, maybe I'm wrong. I'm sorry, Apple, if I'm wrong and you're not bubble wrapping everything. But I think you guys get the point. Anyway. This is, this is, I'm enjoying this episode, as you guys can tell. But regardless, the point here is that the Antikythera mechanism is widely considered to be the first known analog computer. And that's right. It's a computer. Now, look, analog computers are not MacBooks, right? These are not digital computers, and there is a difference. But with that being said, I do think it's important to point out 
uh, some some examples of analog computers throughout history so you can see what they're used for to understand how important these things are. From 1881 to 1892, William Farrell worked uh, to ultimately create a tide-predicting mechanical analog computer. That's in the 1800s. In 1912, the Russian Navy used an electrically driven analog computer for the fire control systems on some of their weapons. And during World War II, bomb sites used mechanical analog computers. So those are just some of the examples of how powerful and significant analog computers have been throughout history. But here's the crazy part. Not only is the Antikythera mechanism believed to be the first ever analog computer, but, uh, quote, devices of a level of complexity comparable to that of the Antikythera mechanism would not reappear until a thousand years after it existed. 